Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to be introducing you to response validation in Google Forms. Now, response validation is simply a way that you can create rules that people or those that are using your survey have to follow as they fill out your form, or else they will not be able to move further into that form and answer more questions. So this is a great tool that you can actually use in your classroom. I've got five ways listed in the blog post that is with this video. Um, but if not, I'll talk about a few of them while we're going through this tutorial. So first, what I've done is created a Google form and I am going to do one on adding integers quiz. So I've added a few things in a title, first name, last name. And let's say that I want to create an email address. Now, there's two ways that you could enable email collection setting. Um, you could come up to settings and then you could simply collect email addresses. However, you can actually use response validation, which you come down over to the box that you're working in. You click the three dots and you choose response validation. And you could actually start to set rules so that you could be very specific on what kind of emails you are collecting. Now, an email address is a text. So you see when you click these options, there's different ways that you can create rules. But in this case, we're talking about text. And then when you choose this one, it also has another set of things. It could be that it contains specific words or it doesn't contain specific words. It could also be just checking that it's an email address. Or if you were doing another type of link, you could check um, to make sure that an accurate URL is being submitted. But let's try contains. And let's say I am collecting email addresses and I only want to collect at gmail.com. And the custom error text is to, sh it's basically what shows up when users put in the incorrect answer or the incorrect response. So I might write something such as must end with at gmail.com. Now I'm gonna show you what that looks like when we preview it. And so when you preview it, you come in here and I can pretty much just start typing in my name and you can see nothing really happens. But let's say that I put in, this is not my real email address, I just don't want the little box to pop up anymore. Um, if I have just put in like at Gmail, if this red box shows up that doesn't allow me, that basically says I'm doing something wrong and that it needs to end with gmail.com. When I add that .com, it works. But let's say I was doing hotmail.com. It's gonna tell me something is wrong with that. But if I do gmail.com, it works perfectly. Now, from here, what you really wanna make sure you do that I did not do is you need to make sure that you select required. Because right now, if I wanted to, I could submit this, no problem. However, if I make that required, that means it has to be answered correctly or in the right format before I move forward. So it's always very important that you click that required button. All right, so let's uh, pretend like we're making a quiz. So let's do some quiz questions. And when we do some quiz questions, let's say we want to do negative three plus negative four. Now I don't wanna do multiple choice. I wanna do a short answer because I want them to actually put the number in. But I'm gonna use response validation to let the students know if they have answered that correctly. Now, this time we're gonna select a number because the answer that the students would get would be a number. And you'll see there's a lot of options with number. It could be greater than, less than, equal to. And in this case, we need to make sure that it's equal to because we're getting one specific answer. However, this could also work with different type of questions if you're looking for something that's greater than a certain number or between two numbers or is it specifically a whole number. So there's a lot of options there. Now I'm gonna show you something interesting that happens if I don't put in a custom error text. And remember, always click required. If you don't click required, it's gonna let them keep moving on. So when I come here, I can see it's required now, that's why the little asterisk is there. If I have not put in a custom um, error text and I put in the wrong answer, it tells them that the answer must be equal to negative seven. And that's a problem when um, students are taking a quiz or maybe they're doing an activity where you don't want the answer shown. But if I custom error text such as again, and I reload this page. When students have the incorrect answer, it says try again instead of giving them the answer. Okay. And remember, they have to have both of these filled in now before they move on. 
So see how if I click submit, it says, oh, you didn't insert your email address. That's a required question. You have to do that before you move on. And even if I do it, but I don't finish it, it's still not gonna let me submit because of the fact that it's incorrect. So again, that doesn't happen though if you don't click required. It's very, very important to click required. All right, so let's try another type with response validation. So let's say that you wanted to ask a more detailed question such as explain how to add two negative integers. We're gonna keep it in uh, paragraph text, or paragraph, yeah, text. And what's really interesting about Google Forms, it's very intuitive. So it's like, it kind of starts reading what kind of question you're going to do. And so you can see how it changed it to paragraph text for me. So a little creepy, but kind of cool. Now again, I'm gonna make sure it's required. And this time when I go to response validation, again, here is that really weird intuitive part of Google Forms. Um, I wanna make sure that my students have to write a specific length. I don't want them just to say a very short three or four word answer. I want them to give me a little bit more depth and to dive a little deeper. So instead, I'm going to make it a minimum that they have to write at least 50 characters. Now in this case, the custom error text doesn't matter because 50 isn't an answer. So if I go over to my form and I start typing in to add to integers, dot, 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 um, you can see it's not gonna let me move forward because it's required and I have not reached 50 characters. And without putting the custom error text in, it just tells the students how many characters they need. So it actually doesn't matter on those type of questions if you do have that or not. All right, so another one that you could do, and this is probably gonna be the last one I show you, um, and then after that, really, it's just kind of playing around with response validation. But we could do one with checkboxes. So let's say that we've got something that um, is a like multiple correct answers. So let's say which one, um, which of the following answers are positive? Maybe I've got negative four plus six, negative three plus negative two, negative four plus negative three, and five plus a negative one. Okay, so we can see that there are two correct options here. And when I come into response validation, I can actually select that at least um, two answers are, or, or exactly two in this case, I could choose select at least two, most at most two, or exactly two. Uh, for my students in middle school, I think it's it helps on these type of questions where there's multiple answers for them to know how many they need to select. It causes less confusion so they understand that it's not a multiple choice question because a lot of them when they see the check boxes think multiple choice. And it's something that kind of has to be taught to them. But when we go into the form, what you can see is that they can start um, selecting and two are chosen. It doesn't mean they're the right two, but once two are chosen, then it works. If three are chosen, it does not. So again, it has to be exactly two options. So a couple of ways that I have used this in my classroom is again, like quizzes and assessments, you could use it. I don't tend to use it for quiz and assessments too much, but maybe quick at the beginning of classes, students are coming in, they've got a couple questions to answer. I've also used them for digital accounts. So that's great because you can actually create one of these forms and it's like a locked box and the students have to be able to break into it. And, you know, you can have, I mean, the possibilities are just really endless with this. You can require students to write a longer length of things. And it just kind of gives you a little bit more control on what students are inputting, as well as giving students uh, real time feedback. Now, if you have any questions on this, or if you've used response validation, and you have other ways that you would use it in your classroom, I would love to hear either on my blog or in the comments on this video as well. And if you have any questions, please let me know.